Now I've got a quick and easy dry fly for you today. I found it in the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia. It was tied by Jeff Hatton, a tire and guide in Colorado. The pattern is simply called Jeff's Furled Sally. Now it's not a hard fly to tie, no exotic materials, but it does call for a technique that most of us tires don't use every day. And that's making an extended body by furling a synthetic yarn. Now, if you've never tried this technique, it's a good one to learn and to have in your bag of tricks. And the one I'm about to show you, it's a yellow Sally stonefly imitation, but you could certainly use this for many different bugs out there. Think about the big green or brown drakes out west or any of the bigger mayflies. Now, I've never fished this exact pattern. In fact, I've never even tied it. So you're about to watch me tie this thing for the first time. We'll see how it goes. So there's the hook. Normally I would say there's the fly in the vise, but this is the first time I've ever tied this thing. So that hook's a size 12. It's an Umpqua U201, so it's a curve shank hook, not specifically a dry fly hook. It can be, certainly, but it's also it could be a nymph hook. And I've got some 70 denier thread and a tan. Let's put a base down here. Don't go too far back. We're not catching this body in too far back there. And boy, that was a big mess, wasn't it? Sometimes it breaks easily and sometimes it just makes a big mess for you. But you know what? We can just bury that. We'll be totally fine. All right, so leave your thread right there, you know, about the hook point. And the first thing we're gonna catch in is our extended body. So this is a, a yellowish gold Zelon. So a, a, a yarn, synthetic yarn, it's not wound very tightly. In fact, it's not really wound at all. But what I'll do, grab one end. It's how I'll make furl bodies. And I don't do this a lot, but sometimes. Holding it tight with these fingers and these fingers right here, I'm gonna spin it. And I'm gonna have to do that a good two or three times to get it pretty tightly wound together. So now, let's see, so it's a pretty tight noodle right there, and it's a little bit, you know, they've got some scraggly sticking out, but don't worry about that. What you do, bring your fingers together, and it's going to start to naturally furl. You see that? And that is going to be our body. So let it furl as much as, you know, it wants to naturally. And then we've got our body right here. We're going to trim some of that fuzz off of it, but manipulate it just a little bit to to where you get it how you want, and then the length you want, which is this fly, it's gonna be kinda of long. So I'm gonna catch it in about right there. That'll give us a pretty long body, I think. So let's just catch this in. We'll trim this, the front end of it here in just a second, and any scragglies we have sticking off the back as well. So that's pretty much our body right there. A few extra wraps just to make that area smooth right here. We'll get rid of this front piece. And I've got a couple of long ones right here that just didn't didn't make it into the, the furled body there. But that's it, that's our extended body. Now let's do a few extra wraps right here. And keep your thread to the back. Now take some CDC. A tan or a, a light dun is gonna be fine. Just this thing right here. And kind of, I'm gonna bunch it up. I want it to be about as long as that body. We're gonna catch it in right there where our thread is hanging. So measure it. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Do a little pinch wrap right here. A couple wraps, take a look at it. Is that the length we want? Yep, I think that's about it right there. A couple more wraps to secure it. Now we can get rid of this excess up front. Now do we need to smooth this area out right here? Eh, it probably wouldn't hurt. Just make it a little easier to wrap this hackle. And the hackle is a ginger. This one is actually a bar ginger. I think it's gonna look pretty good. So let's just pull it around. We want it maybe one and a half times. That's not quite one and a half times the hook gap, but that's close enough. Now let's just catch this hackle in toward the back, or right there at the front of where we caught that wing, or the back of the, the front area, I guess. 
couple wraps. I'm gonna leave that stem in there going forward just to help keep that under body there a little bit smoother. And now let's wrap this up, five or six wraps. This is really what's gonna make the, the fly float. The back end and that extended body should be sitting down in the surface film. So four or five wraps, maybe even six, depending on the quality of your hackle here. Okay, I think that might be all I'm gonna get. I'm running out of feather here. Now I'm gonna snip this before I work on my head. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Pull this back just for a second. A few extra wraps right there. Make some area for a whip finish. And there we go. Take a look, see if we have any cleanup. I think we're fine with this one. Just a drop of head cement and this thing's good to go. Jeff Hatton's Fur Old Sally. I think we got a fishable fly here. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.